is Yechiel Marcus. I work in development and plan giving at the Joffe Institute. Very good. Oh, that's the first one. Okay, here's the second one. That's fine. Perfect. So uh, the Joffe Institute was founded in 1982 by Dr. David Bordovitz, who you'll get to meet in a few minutes, and Zanik Shacham of Blessed Memory, who was uh, that, and they came together to found uh, the Jaffa Institute. Uh, when I started uh, 18 years ago at the Jaffa Institute, it was very easy to say that we work, we serve severely disadvantaged children and their families. But today we're we're working with people from soon after their birth at our Parent Child Center, which you'll hear more about soon. And up to people in their 90s, and which I'll tell you about also in a few minutes. Um, we can go to the next slide. This is Dr. David Portovitz, who you'll meet in person in a few minutes. Uh, David was born in uh, New York. He was trained as an Orthodox rabbi, and he earned his PhD in, uh, in social work at Brandeis University. And he wrote his thesis on disadvantaged youth growing up in Jaffa. Um, he came to Israel, I'd say, probably in the late 70s, and the next slide, and he met up with someone named Zanik Shacham, who passed away in 1992, who, uh, Zanik was a uh, well-heeled Israeli, he was a retired senior officer in the Israeli army, he knew everyone, he uh, was not, not observant, he didn't have a kippah on his head, he didn't have a college degree, and uh, David likes to refer to them as the, uh, the odd couple, if you're, for, if you're familiar with the TV show that used to uh, be on, uh, that I guess I'm showing my age by speaking about a TV show like that. But um, they had somewhat of a, uh, a they had a, 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 an unwritten agreement between the two that they would just uh, concentrate on helping the children in Jaffa. Uh, David has told me that they had a, a agreement that uh, he asked Zanik, don't call me on Shabbat, I won't ask you what's in your sandwich, and we'll get along just fine. And that's exactly what happened. And uh, to this day, the Jaffa Institute is a model of cooperation between observant and non-observant Israelis, which is quite uh, significant in, the, in, the, in, the, in society in Israel. So um, without any further ado, I'd like, I'm very happy to introduce Dr. David Portovitz, who's honored us with his presence for a few minutes, and he'll share some of the ideas with us also. Can you please uh, hi, uh, spotlight uh, Tamar Barr there? Thank you, Rabbi Bernholtz. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, perfect. Good. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for for joining in this wonderful uh, technological development that's called Zoom, which makes it possible for us to, to actually get to know each other when we're living so far away. And for me, it's almost nighttime. And for you, it's just the beginning of the day. So I, it just goes to show how really small this world is. Um, I, I, I feel um, really honored to be able to talk to you and uh, speak to you a bit about the history because um, I've been here for 40 years. They were 40 am amazing years. And um, I'm looking forward to the next 40 years. So uh, right now, I feel like I'm just in the middle. And these 40 years were able to make uh, a difference in the lives of many, many thousands of children. I have to say with some degree of humility that I never, ever thought that um, we would be able to, Zonic, uh, may rest in peace, and myself, be able to create a, a monster of this size that now reaches over 4,000 children and adults every single year in more than 45 different programs, and uh, does so with some degree of uh, excellence, varying degrees of excellence, and many, many, many of our children have really succeeded in life. And I don't think they would have been able to do it were it not for the Jaffa Institute. So I, I, I did say humility, but I am very, very, very proud of what we were able to accomplish. I have to say that Jaffa, the Jaffa Institute is unlike other institutions in that it doesn't focus. It does a lot of different things because the idea behind the Jaffa Institute is that every child has a myriad, a, a, a plethora, uh, so many different problems. 
that, that, that they have to deal with. If you're growing up in Jaffa, you've got problems with your family. You're most likely have problems in the community. More likely than not, you're not doing well in school. You, all of these are obstacles in the way of children leading a good life and working towards a good future. So if we, we can't focus, if we focus, then we'll do a good job in one area, but we'll leave so many other areas not taken care of. And that can't be. So as Yechil mentioned, we start when the child is a half a year old. And we deal with children from the time they're half a year old throughout their entire childhood and adolescence. And even as they go on, in many cases, thank God, they go on to university. They go to the army, they go to the university. And we're there for them then too. We give them scholarships and we make sure that they're able to go through life without falling to the wayside just because nobody was there to hold on to them so that they wouldn't get stuck by something that was probably unexpected in their lives, but uh, very, very predictable knowing the community. So we've learned over the years that it's better to deal with every possible obstacle in the course and make sure that we're able to help the children wherever and whenever we are needed. Every day of the year, our, our crisis center is open 365 days a year, even on Yom Kippur, even on Shabbat. I say, yes, of course, some of us like to observe the Shabbat, but not at the cost of human lives. And the human lives that we serve are Jewish and non-Jewish. And we care for every single one of the children growing up in this very, very complicated and difficult community. And as long as God gives us the ability to be able to help, we'll be there to help them. And we've grown from an institution that started with 16 children to what I mentioned before, well over 4,000 children. We've grown from an institution that had $50,000, thanks to Zarek Shakam, who was able to, to bring the money into for the first year of operation of $50,000 to an organization that now works with $10 million a year. Ladies and gentlemen, all this is possible because we've got a great staff and lots of wonderful supporters. And some of you from around the States and also from Israel have been among our greatest supporters. So thank you ever so much. We are grateful and I'm delighted that you're here tonight to learn more about the Jaffa Institute. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much, David. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I hope that you all come to Israel and you'll get to, to meet David in person. That would be, uh, I'm sure he would enjoy meeting you and uh, I know that you would enjoy meeting him. So I'm going to give you now a overview of the Jaffa Institute, hopefully in uh, less than 10 minutes. And then um, we'll go to Michal Bento, who's the director of our Parent Child Center, to concentrate on, on that program specifically. I think we can go to the next slide, Brother Bernholz. Okay, so as David mentioned, we started off very small, and we started with, off with one afternoon educational enrichment center in Jaffa. And today we have 13 afternoon programs in different neighborhoods, mostly in Jaffa and South Tel Aviv including three that are for children with severe learning disabilities and four in Yehud, which is a town about 15 minutes east of Jaffa. Uh, we can go to the next one. Also, uh, I'll just touch on these different programs and we'll, I'll delve into them a little bit more. David mentioned the Crisis Center. It's a residential program for children ages eight to 16 who have been removed from their homes by the courts due to uh, abuse and neglect. Our Food Distribution Center, where we give out uh, packages of food to uh, 350 uh, families twice a month. Uh, we uh, started working with isolated elderly and the Holocaust survivors in the area as well. And another program that I'll mention briefly is our Welfare to Wellbeing program, which is empowering women to return to the workplace. And finally, the Parent Child Center, which uh, Michal will tell you a lot more about. Okay, we can go to the next one. So just to give you a feeling for where we're talking about, if you look at this map here, uh, there's Tel Aviv Jaffa. Tel Aviv Jaffa is one municipality. It's all uh, that's so you can 
you walk down the coastal line of uh, Israel in Tel Aviv and you just all of a sudden you're in Jaffa. You don't even realize that you're there, but that area, and you can see where Jerusalem is in reference to Tel Aviv Jaffa. And uh, so that gives you a feeling for where we're, we're mostly working in the Tel Aviv Jaffa area. We can go to the next slide now. Just to zoom in a little bit more, if you see on the left there, it says Old Jaffa. That's uh, the old area, the tourist, more tourist area, but we do uh, have a center pretty close to there. If you look down on the right a little bit further low, lower, there's Neve Ofer. We have, uh, that's where the crisis center is located. And not far from there is the parent child center. If you look more to the right of the main roads there, the yellow roads, uh, it says Haktikva. That's, we have that, your, another center that I'll show you in a minute. So all in, within this area, all of the locations of the Jaffa Institute are uh, within a 10 minute drive of each other, except for Yehud, which I mentioned, which is about uh, 15 minutes east of uh, Jaffa. Okay, next one. This is one of our afternoon enrichment centers. This one is located in Jaffa Dalid, in one of the neighborhoods in Jaffa. And here there's a concentration of families from uh, Ethiopia. Uh, the, all of our afternoon centers are for children from six to 12 years old. And uh, these children come from families where their parents most likely did not graduate high school. And they, uh, there's real shortage of food at home. Many of the children, we give the children a full hot lunch every day. Uh, this, uh, for many of them, it's really their only full meal of the day. Uh, we help them with their homework. Uh, we give them additional assignments to challenge them so that they can get to school the next day and uh, know what's going on and get excited about learning. We also uh, provide them with uh, therapy, with emotions therapy, a social worker. And I think mostly, most important is it becomes a safe place for the children to be where they can trust the staff to react uh, properly when, even when they're not in a good mood and really, even when they're really upset. Unfortunately, their parents are sometimes so overburdened with their uh, need to put food on the table that they just don't have the patience and sometimes not the emotional strength to give to the children what they need the support and they need that support. Go to the next one. This is the another one of our afternoon centers. This center actually is in uh, the Hatikva quarter that I mentioned before. And this is uh, this one is for children that have severe learning disabilities and behavioral difficulties. This is the center where Rabbi Bernholtz and his community visited a number of years ago. And uh, thanks to the Jacobs and Jacobs law firm, that uh, facilitated a bequest from uh, Mr. Raphael Juden of blessed memory. We, they were able to help us very significantly uh, in this center. Go ahead. Another program that we have is the Musical Minds, which takes place in uh, almost all of our afternoon centers. And it's, uh, it's an example of the enrichment that we're trying to provide children with. Um, when you talk about children who have difficulties at home and difficulties in school, if you can find one or two areas where they can excel, where they can feel good about themselves, where they can feel that they, they too can succeed, that's the most important thing. So the Musical Minds program is that one, an example of that. And to give you uh, a story that, that I was told by the director of one of the afternoon centers, there was a boy named Yossi, who we'll call him Yossi. We don't like to use real names. And uh, the, as, the, as the center member, the center director told me, uh, this, this boy was what, we, what they say he was like an FS, he, he, a zero. He didn't do well in school. He, no, he didn't have many friends. He was a nice boy, but he didn't have many skills. And he started learning how to play the trumpet. And he got pretty good at the trumpet. And the manager of the center took him to the... Uh, to the one of the schools, to his school, and asked the principal if she would be, agree to have uh, Yossi play the uh, trumpet at, at, a, uh, at a ceremony at the um, at the school. And the principal was somewhat uh, confused that she she didn't think that Yossi could do that. But she said, "Okay, let me hear." And he played the trumpet, and she was shocked to hear how 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 well he could play the, the trumpet. So he did play at at, the, at a ceremony at the school. And his self-confidence went through the ceiling. And all of a sudden, he realized, you know, I can do things well also. I can, I can ex excel at things. And all of a sudden, his, his, his uh, studies in other areas started getting better also because his confidence level went way up. So this is just an example of the enrichment programs that we offer 
to, uh, to, 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 to give the children an opportunity to excel at something. And you never know what it will be. It could be sports, it could be music, it could be writing, it could be cooking, it could be one of many enrichment pro uh, pro programs that we offer them. Okay, next one. This is, uh, these are the children that live at our crisis center, the Neve Ofer house that David mentioned. Um, we can't show you their, their faces, but this is in the living room there. Um, this is a, a house for children ages six to 19 that have been removed from their homes by the courts due to abuse or neglect. Uh, and the staff is a real family. There is a prim the primary staff there is a real family with a husband and wife and their own children who have now have grown up already. And, and that, and that can't, can't uh, avoid providing a real home atmosphere, which for many of these children, they've never had in, in their lives. Okay, we can go to the next one. This is our food distribution center. Um, if you, uh, one, one thing that I wanted to mention is that we've, met, we've tried over the years to meet more and more of the needs of the children and families in our area, mostly in Tel Aviv, South Tel Aviv and Jaffa. And what happened is that when we opened up our enrichment centers, we realized that the children, it wasn't enough to give them a sandwich. So we started giving them a full hot meal. And then when one of the children walked into one of our centers and started taking food off the table and putting it in their backpack to take home, we realized that it wasn't enough. We asked what happened and the, and the child said that uh, the mother was sick for a few days. She couldn't go to work and they didn't have enough food at home. And so we realized it's not enough to give the children lunches. We had to open a few distribution centers. And today we give out 350 packages of basic food items twice a month to families in the Jaffa and South Tel Aviv area. Then we realized that amongst those families, there were a considerable number of isolated elderly and Holocaust survivors. And so today we also work with the elderly, which I never would have expected when, we, when I joined the Jaffa Institute uh, 18 years ago. So this is just a picture of volunteers actually from America, from Brooklyn. I recognize some of the people in the picture that are uh, packing packages. And we have volunteers that uh, pack the packages and deliver the packages. And around Rosh Hashanah time and, um, and also uh, Pesach time, we give out uh, thousands of packages to people uh, in addition to the regular monthly uh, distributions. Okay, we can go to the next slide. As, as I mentioned, we also work with the elderly, isolated elderly and Holocaust survivors in the Jaffa and South Aviv area. This is just an example of a man who was living by himself in an apartment. You can see that uh, the apartment was quite run down. And we have volunteers that we arrange for the to, be, to visit the people on a regular basis. They bring them food packages also. Uh, we renovate 50 apartments each year from all different kinds of aspects of the apartment to uh, improving the hot water system, changing the windows, uh, painting the, the apartment. You can imagine in this apartment just how much a paint job would make someone feel so much better about where they live. Uh, in the winter, also, we give out heaters and blankets when people need them. So that's some of our work with the elderly. You can go to the next one. And we also do a few times a year social events for these people who give them an opportunity to get out of their house and uh, get to uh, meet other people, have fun. And you can see how happy these people are just to be out and to be entertained for a couple of hours. Okay, next one. This is another pro program of ours, Welfare to Wellbeing, which is for women that have been out of the workplace for many years for different uh, reasons. A lot of uh, them have had, uh, uh, have had drugs or drinking problem, or they've had serious emotional problems. They haven't been able to work. And they uh, come to the center. We train them on technical, uh, a technical training. And also we give them, teach them a work workplace behavior and how to how to uh, interview for a job, how to write a, a, a resume, how to uh, interview for a job, and build up their self confidence. There was one woman who uh, came to the center who every day she would the, the, this the, this program takes place in our uh, food distribution center in a in a build in a room within that same area, and there was one woman who every day she would leave the center she would walk into the to the, um, the, uh, the storage area 
and uh, take a couple of bags of rice and put it in her bag. And then the next day she would take a bag of uh, sugar. And the next day she would take a few cans of tuna fish. And uh, this way she was able to get some more food. And uh, eventually we realized that she was taking food from us every day. So uh, we had to approach her and speak to her. And uh, she felt like, what's wrong? You have 3,000 bags of rice in there. I, you're not going to miss two bags of rice. And uh, we said to her, if you were in a regular job and you did this, you wouldn't have the job the next day. So it just didn't occur to her that she uh, that this was something that she couldn't do. So we have to we also have to tell people that they can't come to work in the morning looking like they rolled out of bed with their pajamas on. So uh, it's, you have to uh, get dressed, you have to brush your hair, you have to put some makeup on, you have to look good when you go to work. So this is something that is something new also, and that's and something that part of the of the training that we provide these women with. Okay, we're doing the next one. Now we're going to get to the parent child center, and then you'll get to hear Michal very soon. This is just a, a, a gives you a feeling for the neighborhood where the parent child center is located in, in Jaffa. And you can go to the next picture also, another view of the neighborhood right nearby. These these are right across the way from the from the buildings there. Um, and then when you get to the next picture, you see that um, this is the steps going up into the parent child center. I just want to say right now before we get started that we want to thank the uh, Birmingham Jewish, uh, the, uh, the Birmingham, Alabama Jewish Federation and its IWJB committee for their support of one of the groups that Michal will mention, the Adjustment to Motherhood uh, group at the Parent Child Center. And uh, so we greatly appreciate their help over the last number of years. So when you walk up these steps and you come to visit us, you'll get to beat Michal. But meanwhile, here's Michal. We spotlight Michal now and take the picture away, I guess. Michal, yes. you're on. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Yechiel. Hello, my name is Michal Bentov. I'm very excited to be here. I want to apologize ahead for my English and accent. Uh, it's my privilege to be the manager of the Parent Child Center of the Jaffa Institute. I'm married and I have three of my own children, two girls and a boy, ages uh, 4, 8, and 11. I'm a clinical social worker and I'm also a couples and, and family therapist. The Parent Child Center was established 18 years ago. It's a very special place with a home-like atmosphere for parents and children from birth to six years old. The families live in Jaffa and the area. Our goal is to help the parents and the children straighten the relationship between them, a very important and meaningful relationship. The work of the center is based on the greenhouse model established in France by the psychoanalyst Françoise Dulto. She conceived of the idea of establishing a home-like setting for parents and their children from birth to six years old with an open door and an exception, accepting and non-judgmental atmosphere, which would allow for support for the parent and the child. The next slide, please. Families from many different backgrounds come to the center, religiously observant and non-observant, Muslim and Christian Arabs, new and long-term immigrants for the former Soviet Union and from Ethiopia, single parents family and others. Most of them are low income families and all of them are dealing with the same and most important challenges, how to become parents and how to improve their parenthood. In this picture, we see one of our master's degree students who is Muslim, she's studying social work. At times of war or other, other tensions between Jews and Arabs, the center continues to work with all of these groups in spite of the fears that maybe they will not come to the center or they will refuse to be in the same place together. All of the parents express their appreciation that the center always remains neutral and does not take any sides. We always welcome everyone, regardless of their religi religion or culture in order to help them deal with the difficulties of parenthood. One of our mothers who has been participating in the center's programs for many years with her three children mentioned that even during these times of tension, when she lost faith and trust in Jewish Israelis, she feels safe and protected 
at the parent-child center and that she can concentrate on learning skills to help her cope with the family issues on a day-to-day basis. Next slide, please. One of the mothers that attends the center quoted Maya Angelou to express how she felt about her time at the center. People will forget what you said. They will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. This is how we work in the center with the parents. We meet them non-judgmentally at their own level and we offer them our full attention and reflective thoughts and help them build up their personal toolkits. We help them get a better understanding of their needs as parents, as well as their needs of their children and how they can work together through balancing between these needs. Many times there are huge gap between the needs. So we are at the center. Next slide, please. We have eight staff members, including six clinical social workers, a music therapist, and an occupational therapist. Each year, we also have 10 master's degree students that are doing their professional training with us. They are studying different therapy professions, social work, child counseling, music, and art therapy. There are also six volunteers. We have their BA in psychology and are working together with us in the therapeutic playroom. All of the staff, students, and volunteers have individual or group counseling in addition to weekly full staff meetings. Next slide, please. We offer the following programs to the families. The therapeutic playroom, which is the heart of the the heart of the center, individual therapy for parents or children, the addict therapy for parents and children together, parent counseling, groups for parents and children, some together and some separately, lectures on parents and young children. Next slide, please. The therapeutic playroom is the heart of the center. It is open five days, days a week. At every session, the professional staff, as well as the students, sit together with the families that arrive and work to establishing enjoyable and educational interactions between the parents and the children. The interactions is, are informal and spontaneous, but concentrate on identifying the mutual needs of the parents and the children with a goal of creating quality time and improve connections between the parents and the children. The therapeutic Therapeutic Playroom is a consistent and safe place for the families in which to participate based on their needs. Some families come every day, others once a week or once in a few weeks, and others come after a new child is born. Next slide, please. We recently, we recently opened a satellite center in nearby neighborhood in Jaffa, where there are many families from Ethiopia that were not coming to the main center. This center enables 30 additional families to benefit from the services of the center. About 75 families participated in the therapeutic playroom each month, including close to 100 children. This, this picture you can see, there's a, a lot of activities of art and music and reading books that can do, can, can bring together parents and children in a nice, um, interactions. Next slide, please. We also offer private therapy and counseling. The parents can meet privately with therapists about concerns with the development of their children or how to improve their relationship with them. Um, the sessions are highly subsidized, taking into account the financial abilities of each family. The sessions concentrate on parenting and sometimes involve both the parent and the child or the parent and the child separately. This year, there were an average of 50 private sessions each month. Next slide, please. We also offer group activities to the parents concentrating on subjects related to raising the small children. The groups include adjusting to motherhood, for the first and also second child. Adjusting to fatherhood, mindfulness for parents, your relationship with your spouse after birth and others. 
There are also groups for parents and children together, such as communicate, communicating through music, gardening with your child, getting organized, working on independence and others. This year, we held a group for nine Ethiopian mothers together with a social worker who speaks Amharic, their na native language, concerning parenting and specific methods for raising small children. It was a very unique and important group. Next slide, please. Many families are using more than one service that the center offers in order to meet more of their needs. For example, one man, we'll call him Yoel, is the father of one and a half year old twins. When he first came to the center, he participated in adjusting to fatherhood group. He spoke there about the difficulties that he had in his adjustment to becoming a father. He feels a big gap between what he saw as an example from his own father, who was really only the breadwinner of the family and didn't get involved in raising his children, and how Yoel needs to be very much involved in raising the twins. He shared the difficulties and tensions that he had with his wife during the adjustment to parenthood. He mentioned the poor communication between them that become serious arguments, including verbal abuse. Yoel and his wife refused to start a couple therapy, but agreed to participate in the parent training session. They attend these sessions over a period of two years and started dealing with how they could work together better. During the process, Yoel and his wife were able to cut down on the arguments between them. They learn how to respect each other and how to communicate better and to understand each other's needs. They also figure out how to meet the needs of their children in the best ways. When the twins were five years old, they had a baby boy. The mother participated in our group for mothers of second children and gained a deeper understanding of herself as a mother. The parenting group ended, but Yoel and his wife continued to come to the therapeutic playroom and to take advantage of other services at the center. They always tell us how the center is a home for them and for their children, and they express their ap appreciation for the very important process that helped them in many, many ways. This year, we conducted 18 groups in which 170 families participated. Next slide, please. This year, we started several new programs. One of the most successful program is Mother to Mother program. We do this in cooperation with the educational psychology department of the city. We recruited six volunteers mothers to accompany new mothers for a year after giving birth with weekly meetings between the volunteer and the new mother. The volunteers went through a training program of six sessions and continue with a weekly supervision sessions and monthly group meetings. These pictures show the volunteers in one of the sessions, of their training sessions. There is an, one Arab volunteer in this, group, in this program and one Jewish mother uh, that paired with an our Arab new mother to help her through this period of time. The new mothers felt that they had a big sister that was available to support them during their adjustment to becoming mothers. Next slide, please. This picture shows a typical music activity in more normal times before COVID arrived. During this period when there were many restrictions on public gatherings as set by the Israeli government, we had to make many changes in our programs. In the therapeutic playroom, we were limited to a maximum of five people in the room at the time, and parents had to re register in advance for a time slot. After each session, we cleaned off all of the surfaces and all of the toys, which we do into, until today, and it was a really big job, and still. We established a hotline for parents to call us at any time, and the staff was available by WhatsApp to answer questions. During this period of time, we took the initiative to call all of the families that participate in the playroom to check up on them. They were very excited to hear from us and appreciate our connection with them. During COVID lockdowns, we sent out activities for the parents to do with their children on the center Facebook page. 
Many of parents simply don't know how to just have fun and to create quality time with their children. An activity like the following video that you will soon see shows them how to do it. This is such an important part of building a loving relationship with small ch children, even in times of COVID. Next slide, please. I think there's without, it's no sound. Thank you, Rabbi Donald. Nenaer et a raglaim, Nenaer et a raglaim, Nenaer et a raglaim, Nenaer. et a yadaim, Nesover et a yadaim, Nesover et a yadaim, Nesover. Nedagdeg et a beten, Nedagdeg et a beten, Nedagdeg et a beten, Nedagdeg. Ken kach ani makir et a guf shali, Kach ani makir et a guf shali. את הגוף שלי, ככה אני מכיר את הגוף שלי. נקיש על הברך. על הברך. To the, the other slide, to the next slide. <laughs> yeah, it's a long song. Um, during the year, we hold special events such as the parties at holidays times and also a special event to the end of the school year. These events give the parents the opportunity to meet other, other families and feel part of the overall activities of the Parent Child Center. Next slide. Here you can see our party at the end of the school year, which we held outside of the center because of the COVID. And I'm sure I have a, a lot to, to tell you more, but uh, I really thank you for listening and for your interest and caring. And we hope uh, to see you in Israel and that you will come to visit us in the Parent Child Center. And if you have questions, you can happily ask. Thank you very much, Michal. As much as Michal or I can tell you about the Parent Child Center, when you walk in the door and see it uh, in action, I think that you'll really get the. Uh, full picture. So thank you all uh, for each of you for joining us today. Uh, thank you very much again to Rabbi Bernholtz for all your help. It was our pleasure to introduce you to the Jaff Institute and the Parent Child Center specifically. Thank you, Micha, for such an interesting uh, presentation about your work with parents of young children. Uh, as one of the advocates for the Jaff Institute in Birmingham, Alabama told me, she said that the Parent Child Center is a perfect example of how an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. If we can nip the, the, these problems in the bud and, uh, and, and help these children and, and their parents have uh, loving and uh, nurturing relationships, then I think you all can understand how it prevents much bigger problems in the future. 
So uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, if you have any questions, really, both myself and, and Michal, we'd be happy to hear from you. You can see our, our, our uh, email addresses here. You can find my uh, email address on our website also, which is uh, the jafinstitute.org. Uh, if you would like to join us with a generous donation, we would be most appreciative. That's what makes the wheels go round and we would appreciate your help. Uh, in any way, and, and and also if you could be a, an ambassador for our work, if you happen to know any trustees of foundations, uh, please let us know who they are, let put us in touch with them, and uh, just tell your friends and family about the Joff Institute. So thank you very much for joining us today.